Hey gang, Scott here. We are nearly at the end of our series about the filters in On One Effects. We're on the vintage filter in this video. And vintage adds this like old school vintage type of look to your photos, simulating paper from like vintage days of photography. And I'll show you how all the controls work and a couple of examples of how to use it. Some, some ideas and maybe a little guideline on when you might wanna break this filter out. Before we get into the filter, if you are thinking about adding on one to your toolkit, any of the tools and products that they have, check the show notes. Use my offer code, it'll save you money, give me a little support, and I can keep doing videos like this. So let's have a look at Vintage. We'll use this photo here as an example for the sliders. Uh, let's get Vintage added there. And as I hover over that, you can see it says it adds this look that's similar to film and paper from you know the earlier days of photography. And like all of our controls, we have masking, we have styles, we have an opacity slider. The styles I wanna spend a little bit of time on because these are useful. There aren't that many different vintage looks, but the styles that are built in, you know, take those looks and they adjust the sliders a little bit and you get some uh, some interesting things like, you know, a typical blue yellow, which is kind of the default here. Uh, the one that I, I wanna highlight in particular is lo-fi. This one really adds punch and can be interesting for black and white photos. So you know, think about that if you're really looking for a high contrast, high key kind of thing. Lo-fi could be useful. Um, ocean waves, a personal favorite of mine. A you know, red, yellow, warm. Uh, and notice how like warm is a good example. Notice that the top part of the scene is this purplish pink, and the bottom is very blue. Well, when we choose a type of vintage look. There's a handful built in, but pay attention to the icons. Look at the different color gradation. You know, cool is a little bit of blue going all the way down to more blue, but something like iris, you know, it's like yellow on the top and kind of purplish on the bottom. Uh, Slurpee, which is, you know, pretty darn wild, uh, is, you know, this almost uh, reverses itself. In this case, it looks like the highlights are getting hit with this you know, pinkish, really strong pink here, and the shadows are getting hit with cool. So these are telling you that there are differences in the tonality of, you know, what's going to be hit with what, highlights or shadows, things like that. Uh, so, you know, paying attention to that, knowing there's going to be a color gradation, uh, it may or may not work for your photo. I tend to stick with things like the cool ones, I like oatmeal, I like ocean. Uh, I like ocean in particular because you've got that faded look and well, guess what? I, I shoot a lot of things at the ocean so it's not a surprise that I like ocean as a uh, style. But what about the controls here? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and pick ocean and we can see that better. We've got a couple of controls really. We have amount, we have saturation. Amount is how strong or how weak do you want that vintage feel to be? And saturation is the saturation of your photo not the tint or the color you're choosing. To prove that point, let me take a mount all the way down. Watch the blues and the greens in this particular scene, like those blues right in the center. I'm gonna push saturation up and look at those blues kind of going crazy there. The, the reds on uh, the various little bits and pieces out there and the oranges of you know the flags and the cones and the buoys, those are all jumping like crazy. Saturation is controlling the saturation of the colors in your photo. So everything that you've led up to adding vintage, you can still dial back the saturation. And for a vintage look, that kind of makes sense. Vintage paper, photos faded, the colors aren't as strong. But really from here, you're just kind of dialing in uh, the look and the feel that you like. And say for this one, I don't know, something like uh, you know, in and around here looks fine. There's also controls for film grain. I tend not to use them here because you only have an amount slider and I'll push it really far so we can see some grain and size. We can push grain really far. So you can really you know, go full on with the vintage look because vintage photos are on film. They do have grain. But if you're adding film grain, I'd advise to go use the dedicated film grain filter. You have more options. You have uh, the ability to simulate different styles of film. They've actually got you know, the film stock from Kodak or from Fujifilm in the program, so you get that type of grain. So I tend not to use the film grain here. 
Uh, so just zero that out, size at that point doesn't matter. But those are the controls. They're very simple, they're very straightforward. Now when to break out this filter, I think there's a, a couple of guidelines I use. It's not a filter I use very often. Uh, first, the subject matter needs to lend itself to a vintage look. You know, portraits are great, uh, subjects that could have been around in the uh, 19th century, the 20th century. I think those make good choices for a vintage filter. Uh, something that isn't particularly colorful. I mean, if I have a really great photo with lots of vibrant color, I'm probably not gonna downplay it and, and you know make it a vintage looking photo. So choosing a photo that has, uh, it lends itself, let's say, to a vintage look, I think that's the first part. Uh, the second thing is I do tend to like using the vintage filter along with antique. That was one of the, that was the first, I think, filter we talked about in this series, the antique filter. And the combination of the two can result in some very nice different looks. So let me show you a different example that uses vintage as part of a larger look. So this photo, this is a scene where, okay, I could see this existing you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, maybe with the exception of the, 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 the sign on the cafe, that's a little more of a modern type of font. But, you know, uh, it's within the realm of artistic uh, license, let's say. So first, uh, I have an antique filter. I'll turn that on. You can see that this is a pretty straightforward one. It's, it's almost the default straight out of the box, just lowering the opacity a little bit. So I'm taking some of that saturation out. I'm downplaying the colors. I'm already giving it this older style of feel to it. Now we can add in vintage. I'll show you this here. Let me just turn this on. I'll turn it off and on again. Off, on, giving it a bluer cast. It's mixing in interestingly with the shadows. Uh, definitely a more faded look. Uh, a couple of things here. I've got the amount pushed all the way up. That's just cranked. Uh, didn't double down as much on the desaturation here. Uh, the key thing, lowered the opacity, because this is a nice control. We can just say, all right, I've, I've got this full strength, and now let me play until I like where, where it lands. And you know, around there is where I liked it. And you know, the, the number doesn't matter. It may, this might even be a different number than when I started. I'm watching the photo when I adjust that slider. But also, we have our blending options, right? In our blending options, I'm applying to everything, but I am protecting the shadows. You know, watch this, if I take the shadows back down to zero, the shadows got very, very blue, and I didn't quite like that. So as opposed to breaking out a whole bunch of masking, I've got this shadows slider. I can just push that up a little bit, and I'm mainly watching the area underneath the, uh, the entryway to this cafe to make sure that doesn't get too blue. But those two things together, right, let's undo those. Added the antique, that just kind of downplayed things, but then vintage really gave it this different kind of feel. The colors are muted, everything's kind of cooled down. And the last thing I want to point out about things with the vintage filter is, uh, I'll apply a vignette here, but because it's a vintage kind of feel, you can get a little more aggressive with the vignettes. You know, the, the corners can get darker because a lot of vignetted photos, vignetted photos, a lot of vintage photos have a strong vignette on them. So uh, let's open this up and I'll just turn it on so you can see what I did. Yeah, that's, um, that's an aggressive vignette for me. I mean, I can still kind of see the edges there, but for this kind of thing with a vintage type of look, it's, uh, it's acceptable. And the easiest thing for me to do here is just take the feather down to zero. So you can see that I've really just done almost a, uh, it's almost like using a border. And there are a bunch of actually antique and vintage borders in the borders filter, uh, but uh, I'm not too much of a borders person. But it is pushing the, the size and the, the roundness to make this uh, almost like a letterbox kind of thing. And then just fading it out some. I think I was somewhere in the, the 70s range. Again, I'm just watching the edges to see that, all right, it's smooth, but I can definitely see that there's a vignette. But for a vintage kind of photo, that stronger vignette, it, it feels okay. But that is the vintage filter. Very simple controls. You got two of them. How much do you want? And how much do you want to desaturate? You know, obviously choose a color tint and you're good to go. But I think the key thing is choosing a photo with a subject where a vintage treatment can make sense. Like I mentioned, 
portraits. Uh, they kind of uh, can all work, short of something being a very obvious modern fashion. Uh, you know, if you have a, I don't know, a 20th, 20, 21st century type of fashion model and then you do a vintage look, I don't know, maybe it could work. But I like to, to stick with marrying up a good photo subject with the style that I'm going to apply to it. That seems to work for me. But I hope you found the video useful. Any questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.